Hey there! Well, you guys have highly requested it, so let's go ahead and make some wings! Now, before we can actually get into this, I do have to discuss a little bit about how the pattern will work. Now, whenever you're doing any sort of wing, it's important to keep in mind the actual anatomy of wings. You can see here by looking at this, the primaries will actually fold over here. So if you incorporate this into your design, you'll end up with a much more beautiful looking shape for your wings that won't look as staticky and kind of bland, so to speak. It'll look much more natural and give it this really cool, cute vibe. But with that, we're ready to proceed. Now, as soon as you have your pattern made up, usually your wings are going to be consisting of two different pieces, the top half and the bottom half. In this particular case, I have this beautiful aquamarine blue that's going to go on the top half, and then I'm going to have a white on the bottom. So I start by simply tracing out my patterns onto my material here. Now, I will be using Minky for this project, and Minky is kind of an unusual material because the fibers will go one direction, very similar to fur, but it's super duper short, so you don't really have to worry about any kind of craziness should you cut out a piece going the wrong way. It just looks a lot better. It's also a very big pain in the butt to cut, so <laughs> uh, try to be patient with it as you're working. And if you're struggling a little bit, you can always pin the heck out of it with some pins, and that will help reduce the slippy slidiness just a little bit. Once the top pieces are cut out, you can then move on to cutting out your bottom piece. Now you can see that I used a blue sharpie on the top half for that blue material, but when it comes to doing white, I prefer to use either a silver or a black sharpie, just so that in case it bleeds it's not visible. I also cut this material out whenever I do my seam allowance, so I make sure to include just a little bit of excess, just so that there's no marker on very, very white pieces like these. And once again, snip, snippity, snip, and cut all the material out. Now you can use anything for this project. I just find that Minky looks and feels great because it's super duper snugly soft and it has a nice metallic sheen to it when light hits it, so that's really cool. But you could just as easily use fleece or any other kind of salvaged material should you want your wings to be, you know, a little bit different, maybe a little unique. Once you have all your pieces, go ahead and lay them down. Now, you'll see here that there's actually a slight gradient applied to this material. I did that myself, and if you'd want a tutorial more specifically on gradients, I have one coming up, so hopefully I'll be able to release that relatively soon for you guys. But, you know, I'm slow with releasing, so we'll see where that goes. <laughs> Once all the pieces have been laid down and lined up, you can go ahead and pin them. Now you can see that I do have quite a bit of excess here on the material. That is so that when I'm sewing these edges together, I don't have to worry about the machine catching or pulling or stretching anything out where it's not supposed to be. Because I've had this problem a lot, especially with Minky, so I take this into account now and I give it extra, extra allowance. You can always snip off the extra if needed, but you can never quite add more. Then it's just a very long and tedious process of sewing all along the edges of these. I usually run it through a straight stitch once, and then if desired, I can also run a satin stitch along the edge to make it look a lot more finished and pretty, but it definitely takes a lot longer to do, and the more colors you have, the longer it will take. Definitely make sure you take your time and just work through the machine one by one.
But now I come in and add another layer of detail to just to really, you know, highlight the fact that these are feathers and that they have these beautiful little feather slits. By just simply sewing a straight line that follows the curvature of the wing, you can see this already starts to make this look a lot more like big floofy feathery wings. Little details like this can go a long way. Definitely take your time with things and you'd be super duper surprised how awesome your end result will be. these bits are done, I do go over it one more time with just an additional layer of feathering details. This is simply one solid straight stitch that just lines all along the curvature of each individual feather and adds another additional layer of detail. Again, this step is totally and completely optional, you don't have to do it, but I personally find it makes my end product look a lot more fantastic and pretty and just overall more like a floofy feather wing of beautifulness. Flippity flaps all the day round. Once all these are done, we're now ready to sandwich the two together, pin them, and then proceed to sew all along the top edge, but make sure that you leave the shoulder portion open because we're gonna have to leave room so we can turn it inside out. Now, when it comes to doing the very tips of the feathers here, the biggest thing to keep in mind is make sure that as you go through each of the little tight curves, you give the machine a little bit of extra allowance on them. I find with doing feathers, especially with these tight little corners here, the material tends to pinch really bad when you turn it inside out if you don't give it enough room to be able to turn softly. Avoid using very hard, sharp angles and try to make them a little bit more round and use more of a U-shape when you round these corners. That'll help it significantly when you go to turn this material inside out. A lot of it does come with practice though, so don't get super frustrated if you don't get it on the first try. Once they're all sewn together, it's now time to turn them inside out. But once we do that, we're also gonna need to make part of the insert. I take the entire wing and just trace around the edges. This makes sure that I get the exact shape as sometimes my patterns distort a little bit when I'm freeing them from the material. This is simply half inch foam that you can pick up from most craft and hobby stores as well as order online. 
As always, there will be links in the description to where you can purchase these materials online. Make two, and now we're ready for the next portion using EVA foam. Now, I did have a little segment in here where I talked more about it, but unfortunately, something happened to my camera footage when I was editing. I don't know if it got corrupted or what, but unfortunately, it's gone, so I'll just try and explain it as best I can. Now, the whole thing about the material here, the EVA foam adds the strength and the skeleton to these wings. This allows them to be able to take the abuse, stay standing upright, and support the elastic so that they don't slip and slide off your body. I make a sort of chicken wing shape, and this is the actual skeleton of the wing. The rest is just going to be soft foam, so it's kind of hard to explain, but I, hopefully what video footage did survive kind of makes a little bit more sense. I apologize, I don't know what happened. This footage was here just fine when I was editing, and then when I went to finish editing the video, I got like a media corruption thing, and I don't know what happened, so sorry. I'm using an electric knife here to go ahead and cut these materials out because it makes it super duper easy and it saves my hands from getting massive amounts of cramping. If you do choose to use one of these, please, please, please be careful. The blades are extremely sharp. Once you have both pieces cut out, I do like to go along the edges and taper them just so that they sit a lot more flat on the final material. This helps with the product's visual appearance and doesn't really affect the structural integrity of it, so it's definitely something I would recommend doing. I'm basically just cutting at a beveled edge all the way around this material. I also add an additional slit right here at the bottom because I want this piece to be able to bend for when I glue it down later. Repeat with the other wing. Once you have both of your little chicken wings cut out, you can now begin to glue them onto the actual wing itself. Position them however you like, lay them down and check the fit, and then we can start to glue them down as soon as we cut out this little support piece right for our back. I find it's helpful just to kind of lay it down and then take either a black or a silver marker depending on the color of your EVA, trace out a rough little trapezoid shape, and then go ahead and cut that out. It's important that you cut out two of them, so keep this in mind. Now this little part is not entirely necessary, but I find it makes a lot more of a secure connection for the wings in the long run. Simply scratch up the surface where you're going to be gluing two pieces together, and it will give the glue much more of a tooth to grab onto. With all these pieces, we're then ready to take some nice high quality hot glue and start applying all the construction pieces together. The very first thing I do is I glue on the little bendy armature pieces and this is why I made sure that I allowed this piece to flex and bend so that I can position it, giving the wings the ability to fold straight back for storage, as well as everything else. Once you get these two pieces glued down, we're then going to move into gluing down the elastic support. Now this is just a two and a half inch wide piece of elastic that I'm going to score up and then glue down onto this material here. This just adds an additional layer of support and allows the wings to be able to flip and flap and fold and not break because the EVA by itself is very likely to break. 
I've reinforced the edges just for an added level of security. And now that secondary piece that we cut out earlier, I've cut and fit to match in between this space. I'm then going to glue it down and sandwich it right over top of the elastic, thus pinning it in position so that it doesn't overstretch. Wait till it's fully dry, and then we should have our beautiful flippity flappity armature. Now it's time to take these pieces and glue them onto the half inch foam. I also snip away a little bit of the foam here just so I can bend the wing and not have it get all scrunched and stuck up on that edge right there. Totally optional, but it helped a little bit with the movement in the end. Your beautiful flippy armature is done. You can see how floppy and wonderful this already looks, and it doesn't even have the skin on it yet. But in order to wear these wings, we're also going to need to attach the elastics to them so that we can slip them on our back. In order to do this, I take my one inch elastic and I measure from the top of my shoulder all the way around my torso, and then with a little bit of a tight stretch, I connect it at these edges. This gives me a rough measurement of how big my body is. If you're making these for somebody, make sure that you ask them to take these kind of measurements. And then we can start to glue down these new elastic pieces. Scratch up the material so that it grabs on much better. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing. The first pieces you're going to glue down are going to point directly up. Once these pieces are fully glued down and secured, you're then going to loop them underneath the material, check the fit once more, and crisscross them over your chest like this. So when you go to glue on these new pieces, make sure that you crisscross so the one on the right will connect to the left side and the one on the left will connect to the right side. This helps maintain that X formation and gives them a much better grip on your back, as well as just making them feel a lot more comfortable than anything that grips your armpits. I don't know about you, but I always get irritated when backpack straps poke me in the armpit. I also add a lot of excess elastic here, just as an added precaution. And then this little piece is just some super thin three millimeter fabric stabilizer. I just glue it down to help secure in the elastics as well as just, you know, smooth out this edge and make it a little, little bit more finished and pretty. This piece here is simply a little support for my back so that they're more comfortable for me to wear. With all the armature work done, we can now move into actually turning the skins inside out and slipping them onto the armature wings that we've just made. You can take a sharp tool or anything that's got a blunt long edge to it, such as like a pencil or the blunt end of some scissors, and just poke out all the little feather tips. Pretty. And now, Welcome to Struggling Simulator, because I, even with this footage sped up, it still took me a good 15 minutes per wing just to try and get these skins to get into position. It is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> uh, words cannot describe the amount of struggling that I go through trying to put the skins on these because they sit so tight to the material. And that's exactly what I want because it makes them look a lot better. 
Just slowly but surely work at it. Wiggle and jiggle each piece and poke out the tips like this. If everything's cut properly, it should line up almost perfectly and you should be able to slip everything in and it'll sit nice and flat. There we go. See, look how beautiful and pretty. They're not even finished yet and they're already so cool. We're nearly done. Let's go ahead and add the finishing touches to these beautiful flippy flappy boys. Now the next set of layering details I do is I take my sewing machine and I just sew through the foam all the way up to the second layer of the colors here. This is just adding more of these feather details as well as securing the foam in place so that it can't shift around and bunch and buckle and look all nasty and bleh. This is extremely difficult. So if you're trying to do this by hand, uh, may the sewing gods be with you. If you're doing this on your machine, um, you're gonna have to hand walk a lot of it because it takes a lot of practice to get used to this. but you can see what an amazing detail those little things just added. Sorry for the camera lighting, by the way. Uh, I worked on this project for like four days straight and I just got frustrated on the last day and decided no more. <laughs> now to finish these wings off, I have a piece of fur that's going to match the fursuit that these are for. I simply cut a little trapezoid patch right here to cover it, as well as a piece of fleece that's going to rub against my back so that it sits a little more flat is comfortable to wear, and is easy to clean. Then it's just a matter of pinning everything in place and proceeding to hand sew these pieces onto the actual wings. Now, I'm simply just using a ladder stitch here in order to attach these two pieces. It's a very awkward camera angle, so I apologize for the scooting around that the camera does. I tried my absolute darndest to give you guys a good angle to show this off, but if you would like a more precise tutorial for how to do the ladder stitch, please let me know and maybe I'll try and do something to cover it and explain it a little bit more in depth than what I've got going on here, because I'll admit this is very confusing, but like I said, it's not an easy angle to sew at. I, I need to get like a GoPro and strap it to my forehead or something so that I can add, you know, accurately film this for you guys to see it. <laughs> As it was, I was basically straddling the camera just trying to get a good angle on this. Come and fly away with me. 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 Don't you be afraid of it.
Once all the pieces have been ladder stitched, you should have these beautiful finished wings that can flip and flap. They stay on your back the, where they belong, and they just look so fantastically beautiful. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and I can't wait to see what you guys make! Tito! Tito! What are you doing in the basket? That's not for you, that's for scraps. <laughs>